I want to make people sick. And what I do here is the virus is not necessarily the bug. The virus is what I put over the internet. Let me show you how I can crash a system pretty easily. I affect key individuals here, here, and here. And then I take another community in the back of the room. I affect key individuals there. And then I take another community. I affect key individuals there. And what I tell you it's going to do is it's going to produce paranoia, anxiety, and sleeplessness. What I've just done is I've recruited every paranoid hypochondriac to think that they have whatever that is. I've used salient and sentinel cases, and I create essentially a legion of what's known as the worried well. They now flood emergency rooms. They flood their clinicians. The CDC responds back. It's both a short and a long wars effect. Moreover, I can create particular neuromicrobiologicals that may have a much longer duration of action. For example, modified Zika virus. And what I can then do is, as a consequence of that, is I can affect subsequent generations who incur a public health morbidity and mortality effect that then creates an increased economic and perhaps social burden. Long war scenario. One of the newest developments is that nanoparticulate matter can be stabilized for distribution. If you're not aware of what nanoparticulate matter is, it's that matter which exists on a scale of 1 times 10 to the minus 9th. Very, very small. Smaller than a cell. And we can manufacture materials that have discrete properties that can be controlled by virtue of bioengineering and their physical chemistry. To auto-aggregate, to be able to aggregate in particular areas based upon their biological and or chemical sensitivity. But now we go one step further. Most recently, just a few weeks ago, it was announced that you could then aerosolize nanomaterials. And go one step further, I can create small robotic units controllable robotic units at the nanoscale and that these two can be aerosolized to create a nano swarm of biopenetrable materials that you cannot see that can penetrate all but the most robust biochemical filters that are able to integrate themselves through a variety of membranes mucous membranes and wherever mouth nose ears eyes can be then uptaken into the vascular system to create clumping can affect the vascular system of the brain or can directly diffuse into the brain space and these can be weaponized and they can be done in such a level that their presence is almost impossible to detect and as such the attribution becomes exceedingly difficult to demonstrate how much of this material would i need take a look this is the front of my pen this amount of nanomaterial if be able to maintain and sustain with regard to its deliverability and aerosolization could in fact affect all of you, or based upon where I come from, New York City, all yous. Look at this. Look at this. I'm carrying that material. Would you see it? Would I have to lug a giant weapon into the room? No, I wouldn't. And what if, in fact, I utilize some form of an unmanned aerial device or unmanned ground device as a delivery vehicle? Something like a drone or a bug. Could I do something with that? Aerosolize nanotechnology. Smart dust, nanorobots floating in the air, infecting people. In fact, they start talking about all sorts of different programs using bugs, mosquitoes, to inject people with nanotech. Once in the blood, it turns into a neural network, a neural web, a DARPA web inside the brain. And they're running neural narratives through this network to make people hear voices and think things and to listen and to watch what people are doing, turning people into a computer.